Have you ever thought about time travel? Wouldn't it be cool to zap yourself back to some historical time period and get a sense of the way people lived? And then, of course, zap yourself back into the present where we have high-speed internet and air conditioning. Well, scientists may not have developed a time machine yet, but literature creates its own kind of time travel that allows us to take a look at the world as it was seen by people who lived long before us. I'm Caroline, and in this course, I'll be your time travel guide as we journey through six different periods of American literature. In each period we visit, aside from learning about authors and their writings, we'll take in the landscape of the time, looking at history, art, and culture, so that we see how literature was influenced by, and also probably influenced, the events and movements of the time period in which it was written. Each period will be covered in a six-week unit that includes weekly videos, in addition to daily PDF activities and online practice. For today, we'll get a quick overview of the periods we'll study along with the course layout, and then we'll delve into some background information to prepare you for your first lesson. Are you ready? Let's go! The first item on our itinerary is a quick overview of the entire course. We'll begin the course by traveling back to the cultures that lived in North America prior to the arrival of the Pilgrims back in 1620 and before the settlement of the Jamestown colony in 1607. The time before any European explorers showed up and began making land claims is known as the pre-colonial period and that will be our first stop. Then we'll visit colonialism and early nationalism, studying literature from the 1600s and 1700s, the time period that formed America's foundation. After that, we'll cruise through the period of romanticism, which idealized nature, individualism, and human emotion, and dominated the literary scene from around 1820 until a few years after the end of the Civil War. Our next stop will be Transcendentalism, which technically fell within that period of Romanticism, but stood out as a bold quest for self-reliance and spiritual insight. After that, we'll finish out the 19th century with Realism and Naturalism, casting aside all that idealism, spirituality, and emotion of the Romantics and the Transcendentalists in an effort to depict the real lives of common Americans. Next up, the 20th century brings us the Age of Modernism, a time when artists wanted to break with tradition and experiment with new forms of expression. Finally, we'll study the literature of the Harlem Renaissance, a period that fell within the Age of Modernism when there was a burst of creative energy and cultural identity for a generation of African Americans and its impacts still resonate in our culture today. I love that whole trailblazer, barrier-breaking vibe that goes with modernism and the Harlem Renaissance. I can't wait to get there. But then I can really see myself as a romantic, breathing in the majesty of nature and striving to reach my own personal ideals. It's hard to pick a favorite. Of course, you're probably already thinking about the period you're looking forward to the most, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Your first lesson, which spans five days, is about the indigenous people of North America. Their ancestors are thought to have been hunter-gatherers who crossed the Beringia land bridge during the late Ice Age. Over time, people continued to spread out and groups developed their own languages, lifestyles, and cultures. This map shows the various regions used to identify these cultural groups, 
along with names of nations and tribes that lived in those regions. We will focus our attention on three distinct groups of Native Americans, the Iroquois, Cherokee, and Algonquin. Living in the eastern woodlands and southeast regions, these groups had significant contact and interaction with early settlers and Americans seeking westward expansion. We'll begin with the Iroquois, also known as the Haudenosaunee, or the people of the Longhouse. The Iroquois nations inhabited the northeast woodlands across a large area from the Great Lakes region to modern-day New York State and Pennsylvania. They lived in longhouses, formed a confederacy of nations, and created a constitution. The Iroquois creation myth, you will read, is known as the world on turtle's back and it begins in a sky world in which there is a tree that should not be touched. Disruption of the tree leads to a fall, and eventually to a set of twins who represent polar opposites of human nature and remind us that life is very much about maintaining balance. Then we'll learn about the Cherokee. The Cherokee inhabited about 40,000 square miles of the southeastern woodlands. They lived in villages, where they made pottery, wove baskets, hunted, and farmed. Eventually, thanks to a man named Sequoia, the Cherokee possessed a written language, something rare among Native American groups. You'll read a Cherokee account of how the world was made, in which life begins in the water. As land is developed, the Cherokee creation myth accounts for the formation of mountains and valleys, an explanation of the sun's path, and even a rationale for the variances in the temperature of springs. You'll notice a symbolic use of the number seven throughout the Cherokee creation myth, and it's significant to note that the creation of man follows that of plants and animals. As you read, you'll probably already be thinking about how the creation myths of the Iroquois and the Cherokee compare to one another and to creation as it is presented in your culture. But we won't be finished yet because... Next, we'll learn about the Algonquin people. The Algonquin people were early inhabitants of the eastern woodlands, spanning modern-day eastern Canada, New England, and the Great Lakes region. While they had permanent villages and crops, many Algonquins would migrate toward the shore during the summer months and return to harvest their crops in the fall. Both the Jamestown colonists in 1607 and the Pilgrims in 1620 famously encountered speakers of the Algonquin language, and language was generally a defining cultural characteristic of these indigenous groups. While various tribal groups within the Algonquin language family have their own traditional stories, they share the idea of a great spirit who created the entire universe, and of two very different brothers born to Mother Earth. Of Glusakap's birth, and of his brother Malsum the wolf, is an Algonquin creation myth about a rivalry between twin brothers and how their interactions with one another affect the plants, animals, and land formations. As you read these stories, you might find them to be, well, a little unusual. However, consider this. If a member of an ancient culture were zapped into the future and saw people drinking water from plastic bottles while watching a movie about zombies, well, they might consider us a little unusual. You know what I mean? So, why bother studying creation myths of indigenous cultures? Well, by learning about the stories that shaped these groups across generations, we can begin to develop an understanding of how the people of these cultures formed their values and viewed the world. This is particularly significant in light of the fact that these indigenous groups interacted with Europeans. By seeking to understand these cultures, we can begin to imagine the clashing of cultures and values that might have taken place. Unfortunately, the drive for colonization nearly obliterated these cultures. We can't change history, but we can develop a sense of cultural awareness, empathy, and respect that indigenous cultures did not receive in the past. And hopefully, we can carry that sense of cultural awareness, empathy, and respect forward into our interactions with people whose cultures differ from our own. 
Aside from your readings, you review some literary terms so you can be mindful of them as you read and you use them in your writing. You'll deconstruct each creation myth after reading it and then you'll write to compare the three. Additionally, you'll have some online practice questions each day, an online assessment at the end of the week, some refresh your writing practice and reflection questions. <gasps> oh! <laughs> All right, get ready for some time travel all the way back to the time of the Iroquois, Cherokee, and Algonquin people and the stories that shaped their lives. As your time travel guide, I'm certifying that you are ready for a trip to the pre-colonial period. Enjoy the journey and I'll see you back here next week. Hey, hey.